This video is for those times where you don't have perfect data quality in your data set. So particularly with Excel sources, what you find is people can type whatever they want in an Excel sheet, right? And if they put text in a date field, that will break your data refresh. So the question becomes, how can we troubleshoot and prevent this sort of thing? Obviously, if you can get data validation in your data source, it's always better to prevent these in the first place versus trying to fix it after the fact. And Excel does have some data validation options, but there's times where it won't work for your use case. So this video is gonna be about how to diagnose your Power Query error issues and potentially how to alert on it without breaking your data refresh. So first things first, this is a query that is linked to an Excel sheet. There are errors in this data. So the first most obvious thing you can do is to just click onto the cell to see what the error is. The number one mistake people make is to click on the text of the error message. Don't do that. Just click on the white space next to the error and it'll tell you exactly what the error message is and the value that it has issues with. If you have a larger data source or if you have lots of columns, it can be hard to track down exactly where the issue is. You'll be scrolling through and trying to find it and it's not the most user-friendly thing in the world. So I'm gonna show you how to make a query of your errors that shows you everything you need to know in one place in a nice scrollable list. The end result looks like this, where you have a column for your column names, the type of error, what the error message is, and the value it has issues with. So it'll pull all your error messages into a table, basically. Let's go through how to do this. I'm just gonna delete this query. All right, so start with your source table. We're going to duplicate the source table. Don't reference it, duplicate it. I'm just gonna rename this to errors. In this query, select all your columns. So if you select the first column and do control A on your keyboard, it'll get them all, or you can just hold shift to select them. And then we're going to right click on a column and then click on unpivot columns. So this is something that if you have a data set with like a billion rows, this probably isn't going to handle it very well, but it works really well for smaller Excel sources. Then all we need to do is go to this value column here and go to keep rows and say keep errors because that's the part we care about are the errors in our data set. So now we have a table with our errors. We can expand this error information using a custom column. To do that, we go to add column in the Power Query menu up here and then choose custom column. I'm just gonna call this column error. And for the formula, it's gonna be really simple. We're just gonna do each and then the space and then try and parentheses and then double click on the value column here and then close the parentheses. Click OK. That gave us a new column that we can expand. So if I click on this double arrow icon here and then click OK and then expand it again. So we need to do this a second time. So double arrow icon again. OK. That gives us all of our error information. So we can tell what the error message is, what the detail is, so on and so forth. Now all we need to do is remove this column. So this column, because it still has errors in it, will cause our data refresh to break if it's still there when the refresh runs. So I'm just gonna remove this one because we have everything we need from it. So this can be useful for narrowing things down temporarily, but you can also use this as a table in your data set. So you can drop a count of the rows in this table into a card visual and then set an alert on that in the Power BI dashboard. So setting alerts is one of the very few legitimate uses for Power BI dashboards right now. So you can set an email notification for when the number of rows in this table is greater than zero, send me an email. We'll go through that real quick at the end of this video, but I wanna jump back to our original query. So here, now that we know what our errors are, it's always best to fix the error in the data source itself. It's very common to have intermittent errors like this, and there are times where you don't want it to break your refresh, right? You want to be able to go back and fix those things, but you want the refresh to continue running while you do that. So the fix for that is to handle the errors in your queries. There's a few ways to do this. You wanna think about which way will work best for your particular use case. So your options are remove rows or replace values. So if you want the rows that have errors, to be removed from your data set, you just pick the column that you want to do that for and right click remove errors. So that's gonna remove any row that has an error in that column. Your other option is to replace the values. So something we could do with this amount column, for example, is to right click on it and go to replace errors and replace the errors with null and click okay. So that's gonna take whatever text people put into this number field and just make it blank instead. And if you do that for whatever columns you have that are particularly problematic, 
it'll keep your refresh running because it's not hitting any errors when it runs. Another super common problem that people will run into with Excel sources are column renames causing problems or sheet renames or file renames. Obviously, it's better to avoid those if you can, but it happens. So for example, I have a column here that I've renamed. If I refresh this query, my query is now broken. So if I walk myself up my steps in my applied steps on the right here, there will be a point at which the query does work. So you basically just need to find the step that's failing. Usually that's this first change type step because that's something that Power Query is automatically adding for you based on how your data is structured. So for me, when I renamed a column, this part right here can no longer find that column because it's looking for it by name. If I update the name here, so just by taking out this two and then hit the checkbox, now it functions. Other things you probably wanna avoid are the steps where you reorder columns in Power Query. So that usually like yanks all of your column names into the step and it's not really necessary. So try and avoid using those if you're worried about your data set refreshing. But generally speaking, less is more in Power Query. So both for speed and for reliability, only do steps on fields that you actually need to do. Just makes your life easier. I'm gonna go ahead and replace my errors on this one too with null. And then I'm gonna load this and show you how to do the alerts. I just noticed I spelled Excel wrong in my with two L's. So what we wanna do to reference our errors in an alert while still refreshing our data set is we drop a number for a row count of errors into a card visual. So the dashboards in Power BI will let you set alerts on things. They only work with particular visuals. And since we only need to count, we're just gonna use the card. So I'm just gonna make a new measure on here and we're gonna call this count errors. And we're gonna set it equal to count rows of our errors table. So we can drop this into our visual and then we can publish and schedule a refresh on this. So this data source is an Excel file in SharePoint. I have another video on how to schedule refresh on Excel files in SharePoint and another two videos on how to change your source from local desktop to SharePoint so that you can schedule a refresh on it. So we're not gonna cover that here. If that's something you need, check out those videos. I'm gonna put a link in the video description. I'm just gonna publish this and then we're gonna go set our alert real quick. So here's our incredibly intricate and exciting report page. I wanna point out here that if you don't want your viewers to see this page, you can hide it. You can also just create a new report referencing this data model and not share it with your viewers. This can be something that's just for you. As far as notifications go, if I hover on this, you'll see that there's a bell icon here. This is a new feature that is Data Activator. This one is a thing that requires premium. There's an option that does not require premium. We'll get to that in a second. But if you do have premium, you can set an alert right here for your count of errors being greater than zero. You can have that send you an email or a Teams message and choose your recipients. You'll notice there's a alert here that says that your workspace will be upgraded to use the fabric free trial. So that's the premium there. If you do not have premium, you can still use alerts. All you have to do is add this tile to a dashboard first. You wanna use this pin icon next to your card. So if you pin this to a new dashboard and then go to it, you have the option here in this context menu to manage alerts and add an alert rule. Just set the condition to be above zero, and then you can choose the frequency. There's a note here that alerts are only sent if your data changes, and you have the option to decide whether or not you want it to send you an email. So just click on save and close, and then you can trigger this by refreshing your data set. And again, I have another video on how to schedule a refresh on file sources, so check that out if you're not sure how to schedule a refresh on your file source. The email looks like this right here. So this is very useful, probably one of the few legitimate uses for Power BI dashboards right now, sadly. So that's everything I have for you today. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.